kitchen folks in today's film i'm going to be making a chocolate cheesecake an english style chocolate cheesecake so not a baked one a chilled one and it's a chocolate one so it's even better than a cheesecake and even better than that it's gonna have cadbury's cream eggs in it ah. so let's have a look at those key ingredients so starting left to right we have digestive biscuits caster sugar three different lots of chocolate. I've got dark chocolate, I've got Cadbury's cream eggs, and I've got cocoa powder. I've got some Bertolli spread in place of butter. You can use butter, margarine, whatever. I've got some double cream, extra thick, and Philadelphia cream cheese, lovely stuff. So what's the rationale behind the cheesecake anyway? Well, it's Easter Sunday, and I fancy doing something Easterish anyway, but more importantly, it's my dad's 81st birthday, and he's coming over this afternoon. So I thought, rather than bake him a birthday cake, I'm gonna make a cheesecake instead, an Easter chocolatey Cadbury's cream egg cheesecake, and I know that he'll love it. So first things first, I've got a saucepan with some water in the bottom, and I'm just gonna put this on to heat up. So I just want it on a low heat, I don't want it nuking, and I'm going to put that on top. So here's my chocolate, and actually using the bowl that was on top of the saucepan, I'm actually going to break up my chocolate pieces and put them in this bowl. So this is 200 grams of chocolate, dark chocolate, I will hasten to add, going in. There's going to be slightly less than 200 grams because I need to have a sample and I think my wife probably does too. So. Put them to one side you get the picture it's very essential that you sample the ingredients for quality and i now need to get one cadbury's cream egg because there's five in this box if well are so if you don't know cadbury's cream eggs these are a british institution and at this time of year because it's easter they're for sale in the shops and they are gorgeous it's chocolate with a fondant filling all that is going in there and i'm simply going to put that pan on there and just leave it. So over time the chocolate will melt and I can just leave that to be getting on with that but yeah it's very essential that you try the stuff. Next I've got my digestive biscuits and I'm using supermarket own brand you don't need to buy fancy ones they've got so expensive the branded biscuits ridiculous to be quite honest. So what I want to do is put 15 in this bowl one two three four five six thirteen fourteen fifteen and again, it is essential that this is quality controlled. Hmm, this was number 16. Now I need to make a cuppa. Okay, rolling pin. Just got to break up those biscuits gently so they don't go everywhere, but I want them in crumbs. You can also put them in a blender, but I'm doing it the manual way. It's basically a giant size pestle and mortar. I'll come back to you in a couple of minutes. There, I think you can see that I've got a crush on these biscuits. Crumbs. Okay, I've got a dessert spoon. This is my caster sugar, and I'm going to put a heaped dessert spoonful of caster sugar in with my biscuit base. Okay, so I've now got to weigh out 60 grams of the Bertolli, 62, that'll do. And that's going into the microwave for less than a minute. I just want it to melt, basically. Yep, that will do nicely. Then the melted Bertolli gets drizzled around the sugar and the biscuits, like so. And this now gets mixed together until it becomes a stiffer and less powdery mixture. Okay, that's all mixed nicely. So next I want to get myself some greaseproof paper. I want enough for the tin. So this is the tin and that's enough. It's got to be pushed in, don't forget. So I'm going to just tear that off. Now I'm going to do something a bit crackers. You might think it's crackers, but this is actually making the paper easier to work with. And I believe that the French call this ruching thing, the patisserie people. If anyone knows, correct me or tell me otherwise. Or tell me that I'm right. 
properly. Right, so there's the paper. And I'm going to push that down into the tin. And don't mind it overlapping, it's fine. And it means with the creases I'll get some interesting imprints and shapes at the side. It will look like it's handmade and not machine made. And that's important to me. Okay, now I take my biscuit crumbs, dip them in. And then with the back of the same spoon that I used before, spread them around so they're evenly on the base and then push them down so they form a solid biscuity layer at the bottom of the cheesecake. Try and get it as consistent as you can so you've not got uneven, uh, an uneven base. So just keep going round and pushing it down and pushing it down and working it until it looks fairly solid. Okay, that looks good to me. So the cheesecake base is now going to go into the fridge and it's going to stay in the fridge for about 40 minutes. This will allow the base to set. It means that the melted butter will then solidify a bit more and everything will bind together and it'll be a nice solid base for the cheesecake. So we just have a quick chocolate update. You can tell the water's boiling and now the chocolate is beginning to melt. Look, there's the cream egg inside the fondant. And yeah, this is going absolutely as expected. The best thing about this recipe is that as it's a cream egg and not a real egg, that you can lick the spoon. Mmm! Oh my word. Just don't put it back in there. Okay, I need to take the chocolate off here now and let this cool down. I don't want it to set, but I don't want it to be hot when I'm working with it. Okay, next I'm going to start to think about the filling. So I'm going to weigh out 100 and 50 grams of caster sugar. Oh, a bit much, 166. It's Easter, don't matter. Then I'm gonna get my Philadelphia, and you don't have to use Philadelphia. I got this because I really do like Philadelphia, but you can use any uh, soft cheese like this, but use full fat, don't use um, the half fat stuff because it just doesn't work out as good in these sort of recipes. And then with my wooden spatula, I'm gonna get the whole lot out of there and plop it in here. So this is a 280 gram tub incidentally. It's been in the fridge so it's quite stiff but it just needs working around a little bit. And then as I'm doing that I'm going to gradually add the sugar into it. And what you'll end up with is a, a sweet cheesy kind of like frosting almost. And a bit more. the rest of it in and that's beaten together nicely and yeah I am absolutely sticking my finger on the edge of the bowl mm. I can't begin to tell you how good this is so next with this I'm going to get my cocoa powder and I'm going to get two teaspoonfuls like so I'm using heaped teaspoonfuls and then this needs to be thoroughly, thoroughly mixed in. Now what I've got is a sweet chocolate cream cheese. Okay. I deserve this. I've discovered what happiness tastes like. Okay, I'm also going to pop this into the fridge as well. Okay, that's also going into the fridge for another 20 minutes. This has got 20 minutes left. So everything's cooling nicely. I'm just about ready to start putting it together. But before I can do that, I've got this tub of extra thick double cream. And this is a 300ml tub and I need 200ml out of here. The remaining 100ml will be used to pour on top. In fact, it's extra, extra thick. I mean, that is literally like cream cheese again. That is thicker than I've ever seen it. Maybe I should have just gone for thick and not extra thick. Um, hmm. Slightly concerned, but I'm going to live with it. Live with the consequences of my actions. We'll deal with it. It will work somehow. Right, that's roughly 200 mil. I'm having to guesstimate. So I'm going to put that into my bowl. 
Okay, this is my Bosch Clever Mix. Let's get this cleverly mixed. I'm going to start on low. Let's see what happens. I think this is too thick to whisk. But I'm going to persevere. I'm gradually increasing the tempo. What I'm trying to do is to get some air into this. So I think it's safe to say that my cream whipping is a big fat fail. This has not worked. It isn't working. I can rescue this and I will rescue this. But what should have happened is I should have just got normal double cream. And as I was whisking it, I'm letting air into it. And then I lift and lift the whisk out. And as the whisk comes out, it should leave peaks, stiff peaks. That's what you're looking for in terms of constituency. This is too thick. But I'm still going to mix all this together and it still will work. Just not quite as I'd intended. I think the downside to this could be that this is going to be a bit denser than I'd intended, but that said, it's a cold pudding, so I don't think anyone's going to complain. So I've now got my cream, I've got my cheesy mixture with the cocoa powder in, and I've got my melted chocolate. And what I want to do now is to start to fold these together. So I'm going to take a spoonful of cream cheese and add it to the cream. In fact, I'll take two. And I'll start to fold this together and it will form a looser mixture. And what I'm hoping for is for this to blend together. And in fact, it is doing okay. And what actually, I might just try and rescue this again. I've had an idea. I don't know if this is gonna work or not. It might not work at all, but let's see if this works. Because ultimately I'd like to try and stiffen this up. I'm just checking the thickness of that out. Yeah, that has thickened it slightly actually doing that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an unorthodox thing. I'm going to get the rest of this in bit by bit. I'm going to mix it with the spatula first and then I'm going to blend it. So I'm going to add some chocolate now at this stage, which is actually quite a good thickener. So this is the bit now where I'm making it up as I go along because things hadn't worked out exactly as I planned. Ultimately though, this will work, just not in exactly the same way as I'd anticipated it doing. Okay, once I've got all the ingredients mixed together in there, I'll come back to you. That's everything in the bowl. I'm now going to try and thicken it a bit more with the whisk. I'm trying to get some air into it. Well, that is kind of what stiff peaks should look like, although I'd like them to be a bit peakier. But it's definitely worked to some extent doing this. So this is a bit of a rescue, to be quite honest, and I think it's done all right. Biscuit base is now out of the fridge. Here's the mixture. That is going into there. It's definitely got a nice airy feel to it. It feels a lot lighter than what it looks, and that whisking has definitely put some air into it, which is a good thing. Right, let's get this patted down and around the edges. Okay, this is going to work. It's going to be a nice deep cheesecake. I don't think anybody has ever complained at the cheesecake being too deep. Okay, that is done for now. Time is of the essence because I need this in the freezer for about two hours to two and a half hours before serving. But I haven't finished yet because I've got four of these bad boys to sort out. So I need to peel my eggs. No need to shell. Let's just get the foil off. So using a sharpened knife, which I've just had running under hot water, I need to try and find the seam of the egg and cut down it. The two halves that they've stuck together. It's possibly easier said than done. That's it, that one's done. Oh, a bit of goop. Nice. Okay, there's the half of the cream eggs. That one's going at 12 o'clock and that one's going at six o'clock. I've got to repeat with the rest of the eggs onto there. I'll come back to you when it's done. Mm. Okay, they're mostly in and intact. Slight disaster with that one, that one and that one. But you know what, it's still gonna taste just fine. Right, this is now going into the freezer. 
And we'll be next looking at this in about two to two and a half hours time. Catch you then. But in the meantime, I've got some cleaning up to do. <laughs> See you in a bit. Can't talk, eating. Okay, it's actually been three and a half hours. And that has set nicely. That's not too bad at all. Right, let's see if it'll lift out okay. Actually, I don't need to do that because this is one of those fancy things where I can go like that. There we go. That doesn't look too bad, does it, from the side? I think that's going to be quite nice. In fact, I'm going to go as far as to say I'm very happy with this. Okay, well I did say it when we'd had the birthday. We didn't have 81 candles. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear dad. Happy birthday to you. Oh, oh that's lovely. Oh, look at that. I'll have to get one. <laughs> oh. I hope you can't give it COVID. <laughs> I hope you can't give, give it me. <laughs> there you go. That's not looking too bad, is it? So anyway, the taste, <laughs> it's incredible, it's actually like ice cream, chocolate cream cheese ice cream, oh, <laughs> there's no words, you've just got to try it for yourself, honestly this is pure and utter happiness. Hmm. Happy birthday, Dad. But my verdict isn't the final one. Let's ask the birthday boy. So, then, old lad, can we have some uh, final words as to what your verdict of this cake is? <laughs> well, as you can see, I'm saving it best to last. <laughs> it's got um, nine and three quarters out of ten. That'll do for me. Will that do? That'll do. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy Easter. Catch you on the next film, folks. The film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the home and garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv. Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is Stu Moss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.